University of Suffolk, Brightspace Tutorials. Running a virtual classroom session. For this tutorial, we'll assume you've seen our tutorial on setting up a virtual classroom session and are ready to run it. You might want to make yourself a cup of tea first, as this one is longer than most of our tutorial videos. So, within your module, select Communications from the navbar and choose Virtual Classroom. Under Active Meetings, select the three dots by the name of the session and click Launch. You will then see the launch screen. As the lecturer, you may enter up to 10 minutes in advance of the time that students can enter. If the option to begin the meeting is greyed out, you're probably too early. You will also see the link for external participants if you've allowed them to join. If necessary, you can copy this and share it with anyone who has misplaced it. Do note though that you shouldn't use this link to join the session yourself or you will only be joining as a student. Finally, when you're ready to get set up, click Enter Meeting Room. Once you're in, you will be prompted on how to join the audio. If you're the host for the session or you will be speaking at any point, select Microphone. You may then need to give permission for the browser or website to use your microphone. Before we look at the technical options, it's worth mentioning the importance of setting your expectations. You should always do this at the start of the session. For example, should your students use their microphones throughout, or would you like them to leave them off unless asked? Will they have opportunities for questions? If the session is being recorded, have you reminded them that the audio and the chat will be visible afterwards? Just as you manage students in a physical space, you need to make clear how you expect them to behave in an online session. Next, we're going to take a tour of the features, working anti-clockwise around the screen. We will start at the top. You can see the name of your session and a recording indicator. Clicking the indicator will pause or resume recording. You will be prompted if you're going to stop the recording. It's a good idea if part of your lecture should not be recorded for confidentiality, but do remember to begin recording again when necessary. It's very easy to forget. This is just a demo, so I'll turn it off for now. Moving on, on the left hand side is a menu containing several options. The topmost icon brings up the participants pane. This will show you everybody who is currently in the room. Note that the lecturers have a square icon and the students have a circular icon. If you look at the bottom right of their icons, you can also see that the first participant has not joined via their microphone, whereas the second has. If you look at the top left of my icon, you can see a symbol to indicate that I am the presenter. Clicking your own name gives you a few options. You can set a status, which appears as a small icon by your name. If you're expecting this to be used as a means of communication, make this clear and ensure that students know how to do it. Clicking on someone else's name gives you the option to send them a message in the private chat. You could also make them the presenter, which gives control of the slides to them. As the moderator, you can revoke this when you need. To do so, just click on your name again and choose Make Presenter. If their microphone is on, you will have an option to mute them here. You can also remove them from the room. Finally, if it's a guest lecturer, you may wish to make them a moderator as well, which gives them the same options that you have. You can click the microphone icon to mute everybody's microphone. That's the quickest way to turn everyone's microphones off temporarily or permanently, which you may need to do in a session with a lot of attendees. They can turn them back on, but as you'll see next, it's possible to prevent all participants from using their microphones at all. Next to that is a padlock icon. Select this to manage the permissions for people in the session. You can control whether they can share their webcam, see others' webcams, use private chat, public chat, and see the others in the user list. If you're in a large session, it makes sense to turn off the webcams by selecting here. You can only see a few at a time at any rate. You can hide or show this pane by clicking the icon in the top left. Moving on, the speech icon will open the chat window. It's a good idea to put a welcome message in here before anybody arrives. 
It also displays a phone number here that students can phone if they are unable to hear the audio. Before we move on, note that you can send files in the public chat, though if they are particularly important, they should be made available in Brightspace anyway. You can also save, copy or clear the chat using the three dots in the top right of the pane. If there are new messages, the speech icon will have a number indicating how many unread messages there are. Next, you have the polling options. The students can't see your options as you create it. With any poll, you'll either need to display the question as a slide that you've prepared beforehand, or simply say the question via your microphone. The students will only see the possible options, not the question. All of the preset options will simply give them those exact choices, i.e. if you select true or false, students will see these options displayed on their screen. You can then see the live poll results. Again, students can't see this. You then have the choice of making a note of the result for yourself or showing the result on the slides. If you displayed the poll result on the slides, you can get rid of it by clicking the cross over here. If you chose Create Custom, you can put any choices in, but this may take time while the students are still listening to you. The next menu item is for breakout rooms. This allows you to divide your students into separate sessions in which they can present to the other people in their group. There can be up to six rooms which you can change via the drop down and the time limit is up to you. You can manually end this early if necessary. If you want to assign students to other groups, simply move their name or choose randomly assign. Click create when you're happy with this. Once they're up and running, you can drop into the audio if you want. Click where it says join audio by the name of the room and you can hear and speak to that group. When you're finished, press return audio. To fully join the room so that you can take part, select join room. This will then open in a new window and again prompt you on joining with your mic or not. You can leave the room by clicking in the top right and choosing leave. If you need to re-enter, just repeat the above steps. When you rejoin the main room, it may give you another prompt about whether you want to use your mic or not. If somebody turns up to the session after the breakout rooms began, you can select the Invite Participants button. You then drag their name into the room. To end the rooms before the limit that you chose earlier, select End Breakout Rooms. Bear in mind, there's no way to record the content of the breakout rooms. The last option in this menu is for closed captioning. Closed captions aren't an automatic thing. Someone else would need to be typing as you speak, so you probably won't be using that. If a lecturer clicks Enable Closed Captioning, they can start typing. Moving to the bottom left of the presentation screen, there's an important button. This is where you upload your presentation. The best thing is to make sure that your presentation is saved as a PDF. This will ensure that it displays properly. You can't have animations in Virtual Classroom, so there's no advantage to using the PowerPoint file itself. Either drag the PDF here or click to find it. You can add multiple files if needed. Make sure that the one you want to display is ticked and then press upload. After a little while, it will convert it and display it on the screen. What you can see is more or less what the students can see, though only you have the ability to change the slides. If you need to use a different file, go back to Upload a Presentation and upload or choose a different one. The good thing about this is that it will remember where you were in the previous file if you need to switch between two. In the top right of the window, there's an option to temporarily hide the presentation. You can restore it by clicking the icon that appears in the bottom right. You can also zoom in or out, or fit to the width of the screen. This will also adjust the view for students, whereas the full screen option is just for your screen. Students can enable it themselves if they prefer. We'll move on to the options at the bottom. These are to do with your audio and video. If you have joined with your microphone, the mic icon will allow you to toggle your mic on and off. 
the hang up icon is a bit more drastic. That will disconnect the mic and you'd have to go through the initial mic test to reconnect. Clicking the camera will display your webcam. You can change which camera you're using if that's relevant to your device. You may need to tick a pop-up box to allow it to do so. It's a very good idea to have this on if you can, as it will make the session more personal. If not, you might consider having the camera on just to welcome students and to finish the session. To take off the webcam, click the camera icon again and choose to unshare. Finally, you can share your screen. Bear in mind that this doesn't work for videos. If you want students to watch a video, put it in Brightspace beforehand and direct them to watch it at the relevant point. The exact screen sharing options will depend on your device and browser, but this is what it looks like in Chrome, which is generally the best bet for compatibility. You could share your entire screen, but it's best to avoid this if you can, or you may share something that you don't want others to see, or you may have email notifications pop up. You can share an application by choosing Application Window. I'm now showing a blank Excel spreadsheet. Finally, assuming you're in Chrome, you can share just one tab, which is good. The handy thing about this is that it only shows the web page itself, not the address bar or anything like that. It will take you to the page or application that you're sharing. If you go back to the Virtual Classroom tab, you can pause and resume the screen share or end it altogether. Let's move on to the annotation options at the right of the screen. By default, your mouse will show a red pointer. If you click the tool, you can choose from text, shapes or lines, as well as a pencil. Selecting a tool will give you further options such as size or colour. You can undo annotations one at a time or clear them all. Finally, the last option will allow all of the other participants to draw or write on the screen. This will show their name by the location of their cursor. If anybody goes rogue, you can remove their ability to write and clear the annotations. Finally, you have some other options in the top right. If we choose settings, you'll see that you can choose whether you want audio or pop-up alerts for chat or for new people joining the session. I wouldn't worry about data saving unless you're on an incredibly poor internet connection. Ignore the options in advanced. We will select save and return to the main screen. Lastly, when it's time to end a meeting, you can do so here. Clicking end meeting will end the session altogether and boot everyone out. If you just leave the meeting, another moderator could continue to present, which is a possibility if you're team teaching. It will give you a warning if you're about to leave, and then a prompt that you can close the tab. That covers all of your options while presenting a virtual classroom session. Thanks for watching. For more information about Brightspace, visit our LibGuides pages on libguides.us.ac.uk forward slash Brightspace. Here you'll find details about support or training, what to do if you have specific questions, as well as a range of tutorials and FAQs.